Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Scene Investigation, where we have a look at various cryptocurrencies and projects and we ask ourselves whether or not they can be worth investing in. Today we'll be looking at Energy Web now. If you like what I do on this channel, please do consider liking and subscribing. Um, and if you want to comment, that would be delicious. Um, but if you were going to comment something nice, then that would be lovely. If you want to comment something which is just like, dude, you suck, do better research, get a, get a job, um, please don't. Uh, just leave. Um, if you don't like the content, um, but anyway, um, but if you do want to, let's say, um, comment something negative, please at least try to make it constructive. So it's like constructive criticism. Um, yes, maybe. And also if you want to add any sort of factual, um, evidences behind the project or any other things about it, then yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm trying to get, create a community around spreading the truth about projects so that we can help others to avoid rug pulls and all that sort of jazz. Um, <clears throat> And help people hopefully earn some money. Uh, another little disclaimer: this should not be considered as financial advice. It is for inspirational, educational, and entertainment purposes. Cool. Let's jump right into it. Um, so, Energy Web Token (EWT). Now, this one is. Um, let's have a look at how the hell the prices have gone. So, 0 0.66. So, I believe that they've been around. Uh, so, they were founded in 2017, and they launched their first, I guess, what would you call it, token. Uh, in twenty in the middle of twenty nineteen, so they've gone from zero point nine nine all the way up, and they had their all time high sitting at just over twenty dollars, and then now they're currently chilling at about seven dollars. So let's have a look at exactly what EWT is. So what is the Energy Web Token? So Energy Web Token is the operational token behind the Energy Web Chain, a blockchain-based virtual machine designed to support and further application development for the energy sector. Energy Web Chain was launched in June 2019. <laughs> yeah, mid. Uh, the Energy Web Foundation is the non-profit enterprise behind the project. EWT aims to bring diversity to the energy sector by by allowing developers to create decentralized applications, dApps, the virtual machine has the potential to benefit actors from all areas of ener of energe energetics, including grid operators, software developers, and vendors. So, we still need to ask ourselves what makes this unique. Um, and so what I've seen, so the main sort of thing which makes these guys unique, so feel free to pause the video, just have a bit of a squiz over that. So what essentially makes them unique is that they are trying to specifically focus on the energy sector with this sort of jazz. Um, now this did make me think of the uh, Arriva token, if anybody knows them. Um, and that was an absolute rug pull, um, but we, but I think that one of those reasons is because of the actual tokenomics of the project were just pretty horrendous to be honest. And I think it was just an absolute rug pull looking from like a mile away. So anyway, um, but this one, I don't think it is a rug pull because let's look at the two, well, two big factors. The fact that we have a $228 million market cap, that is heckin' massive. Um, and, the, and the rank is 187. So what's interesting is that this says token, but it's listed under coins. Now I opened up Shiba Inu because I wanted to, to show that for comparison. So this is actually listed under tokens. Um, so I'm not so I'm not exactly sure what's sort of going on properly with that. However, um, I do believe that this is probably being built on the Ethereum network because they do quote Ethereum a bunch in what they actually talk about. So let's have a look at uh, some of the token holders. Now, what's awesome is that um, is that it doesn't seem that anybody has a huge amount of I guess way on the market when it comes to this sort of token, right? So the highest wallet we currently see is at five percent. And the other, uh, so number two and number four are uh, the Uniswap um, contracts, um, and then the and then the others are generally below two percent. So, to me, that's quite attractive. That is quite an attractive thing to be looking at. So I do believe that um, that in terms of the, the tokenomics, it is quite good. However, while researching the project, I did not find so amongst all of these two hundred and thirty-six tabs. Um, I did not actually find any information about how the tokenomics worked. However, um, I did watch a video which actually said that they talk about it being a, um, a what is it called? They talk about it being a proof of authority token. And then so we jump over to uh, BSC check to see what we can find. So it says warning so we can buy and sell, which is fine. Ownership is not renounced, um, although it says 0%. So it's kind of like, is that really that much of a bad thing? <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, so it kind of treats it as if it is a bad thing. Um, if anybody knows why that is a bad thing, please do feel free to share in the comments about why that would be, because um, that could be helpful for possible future videos. Um, and so in terms of things being locked or burned, uh, I don't think that they can read everything, um, but it says that, that, that the liquidities are okay, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be hugely attractive hmm. in terms of that sort of jazz. So token supply, so top holders liquidity is okay for that. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it looks too unattractive according to those stats. Token sniffer uh, looks okay here. Ownership renounce case, so, um, so it has not been renounced. All other holders possess less than 5% of token supply. A wallet contains a substantial amount, which is, quite, which is kind of funny because the wallet which contains a substantial amount is literally just above 5%. So yeah, um, so I think with that being said, it could potentially, I guess, cause some small level of rug pull if they were, well, 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 not a rug pull, but just like, just like the price would just dip quite heavily if, if their top wallet was to, you know, suddenly sell. Um, but as I say, I don't think I'm personally too worried about that, but we will have a look why. Uh, so less than 0.01% is burnt. So it's a bit concerning with looking at, at that sort of jazz. So we have a look at some of the Reddit stats. Um, so the Reddit stats have got 4,000 subscribers. Um, they've been going pretty okay, man. Um, so, you know, had like a few fluctuations here and there. I mean, they had their massive blow off, um, top during that sort of time of the year, which was just around the April slash May-ish area, or even a little bit of March. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of okay. And so yeah, so it looks like there hasn't been a huge amount of sort of social interaction. I did, I was interested in joining the, the Discord, but... Yeah, they they asked me to do extra things which I didn't want to do. Um, so yeah, but anyway, um, so if anybody is from the Discord listening, please do not consider that hate. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so we have a monthly discussion. It, I haven't actually sort of seen if there's maybe anything on here which sort of we'll have a look if there's any sort of scam comments. It doesn't really look like these are sort of scam comments. They just look like standard users who just kind of ask about things and answer things. So that's cool. I think that because um, I did actually have a look at some of their Twitter uh, posts as well to see if there was any sort of bot comments or anything. And it looks like these guys are very legit. I didn't see anything which is, you know, just being absolutely copied and pasted like hashtag moon, ha hashtag, I don't know, rocket ship. Um, yeah. So we also have a look at the uh, followers on Twitter. And they seem to be going pretty good. So uh, almost, almost, uh, so just under four thousand. Um, so that's actually quite a small chunk of what they have actually had previously, um, because it says that they have about fifty something thousand. So that's all good. So we continue moving on. Look at the Google Trends, EWT, and Energy Web is what I searched for. Not exactly sure if actually we'll check if. So it looks like EWT only really has to do with the actual token itself, which is good. Um, so when we Google it, so these stats are going to be pretty on point. So for the last 30 days, we have had a height over January 11th. And if we have a, <coughs> excuse me, the <coughs> look over the last 90 days, we have January 6th, and that's fine, 11th. And yeah, so it's sort of been quite fluctuating in terms of its popularity and everything. Um, so yeah, I think that that is absolutely fine. So these are some of the exchanges which it is listed on. I do have a link in my description for KuCoin if you want to sign up using KuCoin. Um, so yeah, so it is on at least KuCoin and Kraken, which are two pretty decently sized um, exchanges. And then the other one, I think, just said that it was Uniswap and Gate.io as well, which I also do have a link in the description for Gate.io as well. Um, so we have a look at a little bit about what, what they're about. Um, so one thing is that these guys are open source which I think is really good. Um, so bro browse our global portfolio of projects. So they currently have 50 projects, 25 countries, and 100 plus partners. They have a lot of partners, my guy. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of partners. So yeah, uh, looks like they do talk about um, extra partner things. Let's co-create your next business opportunity. Sounds fabulous. Cool, so we'll move on from that. Um, next page, uh, so this is a little bit about what they do which we've already had a look at that, but I think that what is cool here, the, the energy web community is the largest open source ecosystem focused on decentralized technology and the energy transition. 
um, which I mean is sort of what I was saying before. So keep in mind, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I don't usually like shill or anything, as you guys probably see in my other videos. Some of them I'll probably like talk garbage about, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyway, so these are some of the advantages. So track the entire life cycle of your low carbon energy. Create new product offerings, for example, 24-7 green energy for corporate consumers, transparency platforms. So what's awesome about these guys, and actually uh, actually, we will look at that very shortly. Um, so produce locally, sell globally, fabulous, access new customers, uh, enable crypto buyers and global green digital entrepreneurs to use your energy supply. Trusted data um, and then interoperable technology. So all stuff, which is fantastic from what I've seen. Um, and so these are some of their partners. Now you probably want to like pause on some of these. Um, I don't know if you guys, Blockchain Capital, know those guys? Um, EDF, Electric Blue, gosh, that's familiar. Um, Eon, Equinor, I believe I've heard of them. Exelon, Photon, uh, GE, and such a popular logo Hitachi interesting um, energy which I'm assuming is like a combination between in in innovated energy PG&E uh, maybe you guys might recognize Shell Shell is a big boy Shell is a big a, a, a big name um, Solara I do recognize that name as well um, Telios so yeah so Trust Power, yep, know those guys. Vodafone, yep, know those guys. Um, Volkswagen. So it looks like these guys have actually got some pretty, so non profit and media partners Blockchain News, Energy Blockchain Consortium, and Smart Energy Portal. So I think that these guys are quite cool, to be honest. Um, I think that they are. I think that th that they do have some decent partners. This next thing which we'll be looking at is about some of the co-founders. So Rocky Mountain Institute, um, so they are one of the co-founders. I had a look at their revenue and they showed all the way up to 2019, which they had 36 mil revenue. So they're not just a bunch of like poor hudders. Um, and we also have uh, Grid Singularity. So Grid Singular Singularity is a, is a world leading blockchain technology developer in the energy sector. Founders and key staff includes core Ethereum blockchain developers, ex experienced energy executives, energy regulators, and technology entrepreneurs. Um, and so our RMI is was also an independent nonprofit founded in 1982, which transforms the global e energy uh, used to create a clean, prosperous, and secure low carbon future. So I love what these guys are doing in terms of their, you know, like trying to make the world better and you know, like being green and all that jazz. So I saw this. So this is from Securities.io, and this is really fascinating. So they actually tried to fix a bunch of uh, solutions with this. So feel free to pause the video just to have a read of some of that jazz, because um, I'm not going to read just to sort of save us a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra time. So what they help with, they help with energy waste. The current independent nature of the world's uh, energy infrastructure is inefficient in many ways. Now let me. Sh now this part here was something which really was attractive to me. So. It says, so lack of transparency, the average energy company user has no access to vital information such as overall energy wasted on the network. They are not privy to any sensitive company data. Anyway, I'm just going to summarize it. So essentially they, they were saying that like, that like, because of, of this project, a part of it sort of being open source and a part of us being able to, um, be able to see these traceable logs. Um, with a with access to near real t real time data, we can actually see where the energy is going, which is which I think is fantastic. So you can get passive rewards. Um, so it's a growing network. How does energy sort of thing work? So you can see some of the extra partners here. Um, so energy web chain, oracles, consensus. So they got a few other things um, which we won't be reading through. Uh, but feel feel free to look at the article. Um, on securities.io so this is a little bit about um about how i guess the te technology kind of works so you've got toolkits utility and trust and then so energy web chain and then so validator nodes and, and utility nodes so the validator nodes is a part as a part of the poa slash proof of authority network uh which we have seen um and so we can see the, the bridges tx relay and all that sort of jazz application registry 
Um, and then we continue to move on. So I didn't do research on who these guys are, um, but these are the Energy Web Foundation Council. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to have a look at them, you are very welcome to. Um, but the council doesn't really matter that much to me, to be honest. But you know, you guys might be interested in that. So this is some of their team. Um, there's one thing about this kind of team thing which bugs me a little bit. Um, it's the fact that they don't have the most, you know, like pivotal players in top, right? You can go and select leadership. So, you know, if people from Energy Web are watching this video, that would be awesome if you could show. Oh, and there was one other issue with it. Um, so, yeah, we will go into that soon. Um, so, yeah, so we do see a little bit about who some of these guys are, which is cool. Um, and so. <laughs> I've also never seen this before. I've never seen a download headshot button. Never seen that before. That is just that is just straight fascinating. Um, so we have over 500 connections on LinkedIn. So this fellow uh, was the principal of uh, Rocky Mountain Institute, um, which I, th I feel like they're like shut down because I couldn't find any information sort of telling me or when, when I when I did my brief research of uh, Rocky Mountain Mountain Institute, I couldn't find any sort of um, monetary data after 2019. So I'm not exactly sure what happened with that. And then so now he's with Energy Web, so Chief Executive Officer, Chief Commercial Officer, Co-Founder and Secretary. So we can see some of that. And then so we have uh, Rafaela, if I'm pronouncing that, or Rafaela. Sorry, I feel like I'm butchering your name. Um, so CFO and Secretary of the Council. Uh, it's a bit strange how she doesn't show any pictures for some of her previous background. Um, yeah, so she's one of the board members and the chief financial officer. Um, and she has been a CFO before, which is actually, I guess, quite good. Money, Manny H. Um, he, uh, so, he, wow, he's actually worked with Oracle. That's cool. Uh, so this fellow has been with Oracle, which is awesome. Uh, Mimos, where he has been, or M-I-M-O-S. We're software architect and principal solution architect, and now he is a chief technology officer, which is fantastic. And we have Ian, um, who is the director of global delivery, and he was the principal of the EW Flex, and also the principal of the affiliate engagement. Um, and he was also working for Rocky Mountain Institute, which once again, he left in 2018, and he went to join um, he went to join Energy Web, which is, uh, which is also quite neat. And we've got one more person, which is Sam. And then he's the Director of Operations at Energy Web. And some of his extra background. So he was a senior associate, but he was also doing uh, the research and, and collaboration for Energy Web, um, as, as well as the research and market, uh, as well as the research and market development manager. <laughs> Sorry, that felt like a bit of a mouthful. Um, so he was working for... Inunok, in it, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, so he was a system specialist for them, and he's also uh, worked for Amangani. Gosh, I feel like I'm butchering all these names. Sorry, guys. And he was also a mountain bike guy. That's cool. Um, that was in 2011. So anyway, um, so let me let me give you guys my sort of final thoughts or my overall thoughts. So here are some problems with which I have with the with this project. Three main problems. First one couldn't find a genuine roadmap now if you go to their main website they do say a little ecosystem roadmap here which you which you can briefly have a look at and they talk about consortia chain um so you know relay chain consortia relay chain and then so they talk a little bit about uh parachains within that um but they don't tell me when this is going to be implemented they don't tell me um they don't give me dates that they, they don't give me estimate ETAs. I don't like that. Um, and they don't they don't even say whether whether or not these things have already been implemented or oh sorry, it says uh in the first quarter of twenty twenty two. So these could already be implemented and we may not know that yet. Um, but I'm pretty sure they had an announcement talking about that on their actual Twitter account. So they actually um, so we're thrilled to announce our partnership uh, to build uh, with Parity Tech to build Energy Web Consortia Relay Chain in 2022. So maybe that's what they're working on. Maybe that is a part of what they're working on. Um, my other problem is is this whole, um, I mean, this is just a website layout problem to be honest. But yeah, if they can make it easier to like see the leadership, that'd be great. Um, and the other thing is I can't see, I can't find any information of how the tokenomics are distributed. But 
here are the extra positives to sort of counteract some of this jazz so doesn't look like it's dead looks like it is definitely still alive we do have members who have worked previously and have got experience we have a market cap of 200 over 200 million and the rank of 180 187 the max supply is a hundred thousand and the total supply currently is sorry not a hundred thousand a hundred million uh, and the total supply is currently 48 million the fact that we can actually see some of these extra holders and we see that that nobody has an overarching reign over um over the actual tokens although there could be the potential for them to be able to you know go and like like print extra tokens essentially um that that could be wrong um and so the fact that they are proof of authority is quite good so i think in terms of the actual thing whether or not you should invest in it here is my answer to that do what you want <laughs> um it looks like it's gone quite a bit down so we'll actually have a look in the last year so it's sort of trending a little bit more on the downside we'll see if we can maybe have a brief look at the rsi since you know that gives us a bit of a bit of a brief indication so we're currently sitting at 37 um, 37 slash 38 whatever you want to call it so i would say to be honest it's it's all right like it if you do want to invest into this project now is probably a great time or you can wait until the rsi dips down even further um, maybe when it when it um dips into into like the sort of uh maybe even early 30s and then you can possibly p purchase them but i think in terms of long term i think that these guys have some incredibly wholesome goals um, I think that they are super genuine, um, and I think that because they are also only listed on KuCoin, or sorry, um, they are listed on KuCoin, Gate.io, and Kraken, um, they still have opportunity to be listed on, let's say, Coinbase and Binance and Crypto.com and some of these and some of these other bigger um, bigger exchanges. So when that happens, the price is likely going to go a lot higher with these guys. Would be my sort of thinking. Anyway, guys, that's my video. Please consider uh, liking and subscribing once again, and I go to Patreon. Please consider joining. Want to create a community out of this? Because um, you know, let's bring some people into the truth about crypto stuff you know um yeah and once again if you do feel like commenting um yeah i will if there is anything which i've said wrong in this video please comment um what i have said wrong um and maybe give me like a source or maybe sort of tell me where i went wrong in here um yeah because you know i'm i'm really interested in uh trying to spread the truth about this so yeah um, you can also get early access to my videos as well if you <laughs> become the little advocate. So anyway, anyway guys, fairly well. Thank you for joining me.